Back in Houston for the third meeting this year and second in a matter of five days between the United States women and China as the U.S. continues their post-Olympic fan tribute tour and ultimate match of what has been a very busy 2012 for them. Hello once again, everyone, and welcome alongside Lori Walker. I'm John Strong. Again, these teams just played each other. What becomes a key or two for this one tonight? Well, I think for the United States, they need to come out a little stronger. They had a couple opportunities on Saturday in the first 10 minutes that they weren't able to bury. It's very important for the United States to get wide, use the width to their advantage, quality service, and as well, quality runs in the box, and having those opportunities to just challenge this very youthful Chinese defense. It's a very young Chinese team, and for them, I mean, again, they're playing the U.S. We heard them they being very physical Saturday. Expect more of that tonight? Well, I think things got a little chippy on Saturday, and a lot of that has to do with the youth. The first time you're on the field against the United States is very intimidating, and it's important for these young players to decrease their fear and increase their confidence. Let's listen to the starting lineups. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing. Performing the Star Spangled Banner tonight, Ms. Taylor Greenwood. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in That our flag was still there. Oh, who say does that star spangled banner yet wave? Oh, the land of the free. And the Forty-eighth all-time meeting between the United States and China, dating back to July 1986. And Laura, let's remind ourselves of the starting lineup for this match. First for the U.S. under their still interim coach, Jill Ellis. Well, the U.S. starting out in their 4-4-2. Hope Solo in the in the nets. But take a look at Becky Sauerbrunn wearing number four. In my opinion, she is the future of this U.S. back line. And then, of course, up top, Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach combining for 51 goals this season alone. And for China, expected to make changes. They felt a bit beaten up on the turf in the travel Saturday, and a couple changes they do have. Well, this is a very young roster for China, and uh, you will see in the back, they've got uh, two players on the flanks that are, were part of the under-20 World Cup team, and uh, their captain, Pu Wei, number 11, she sits in the middle. She organizes this squad, and uh, they'll be looking to her for great leadership. She is only one of two players over the age of 25. And you see the starting four, the number 27, a 19-year-old Li Ying was a starter against the U.S. in the under-20 World Cup just a couple of months ago. In fact, six starters from that match are on this Chinese roster. Average age of about 22 for the U.S. average age of the roster is about 28. Well, Laurie, one of the things, too, that this tour is about 
yeah, you want to win matches. You also want to entertain. How difficult is it going to be against a Chinese team that wants to be physical and resilient to make sure they can entertain tonight? Well, we had a chance to speak with the players yesterday from the United States, and, and they're coming down off of winning that, that uh, uh, gold medal. And so they're very excited to play. They know they have a long break coming, and it's important for them to come out, give the fans here a great taste of what the United States is all about. And part of that is winning, but a big part of that is being entertaining and scoring some great goals. Hao Wei, in his first year in charge of this Chinese team, was an assistant last year. And the previous coach resigned after they failed to qualify for the Olympics. The 35-year-old actually played five times for the China men's national team. So he knows all about what it means to don that jersey as the fans react to the U.S. lineup taking the field. And by far the biggest roars for Morgan and Wambach as their names were introduced before kickoff here tonight. Carly Lloyd, who made her 150th appearance on Saturday, is the 17th player to do so. And Hope Solo, who in that match drew one closer to Brianna Scurry for the all-time record for shutouts in the U.S. goal. It'll be the U.S. and the change blues allowing China to be in their first choice white. Our referee this evening, Christian U.S. women's team to have played for Jill Ellis at UCLA. Laid off for Tobin Heath by Morgan. But poked away by Pu Wei. We mentioned as an 18-year-old started in that 99 World Cup final. On Peng lays it back, but that runs out for a throw. Twenty-two-year-old On Peng playing on the left side of midfield this evening. For a China team that has just five wins to eight losses and two draws this year. Their biggest success was actually a couple of weeks ago qualifying for the final round of next year's East Asian Cup, beating Australia in the process in Tom Sermani's final match in charge of Australia. Heather Mitz making an appearance 136 of her career. In towards Carly Lloyd. Still Lloyd trying to get away to Cheney. Lloyd still fighting her way through. Heath comes through to rescue the ball, and now Morgan. The end. Plays wide. Pressure from Heather O'Reilly. And the U.S. wins it back. Cheney looking to go wide for the pal bet, but a little bit too so. Well, right off the bat, John, one of the things that becomes obvious is that uh, China is playing out of a 4-5-1. There's a lot of numbers behind the ball, and that's going to cause some problems for the United States. They're going to have to figure out ways to break down China's defense, to move the ball through the midfield, and again, attack from wide positions. And that's where they can be the most dangerous. Again, the U.S. win it back in the center. Mitz drops it off for Christy Rampone, who again, tying Mia Hamm this evening or second all-time in the appearance list. Only 77 behind Christine Lilly if she wants to chase after that. Now for John Rui. Pressured off the ball by Sauerbrunn. Here you see Rampone made her debut February 1997. She's actually on the bench for that 99 final. Her 16th year with this U.S. national team. Where were you, John, in 1999 when that game was going on? I was watching my bonus room, as I recall. Outstanding. I was at the 50 at the game, cooking. It was about 105 degrees in that stadium. But what an amazing piece of history to be a part of. So it's given away. There's Han Peng stepping in there, but well reacted to by Sauerbrunn. Now O'Reilly. Morgan trying to hold off the shoulder of the last defender with the ball over here. Well, talking yesterday with Tom Sermani, he knows this China team better than anybody. Australia um, joined that Asian division 
several years back, and, and he was part of the reason why China's been left out of a few recent tournaments. And you know, we asked him, what has changed for China? Where did they sort of fall off the map? And one of the things that we talked about was that China sort of lost sight of what their long-term plan was, and it's taken them some time to get themselves back on track. And that's why we see here a very young team. They've got two and a half years to prepare for the next World Cup. Qualifying will start in about a year and a half. It's easy to forget, of course, China lost to the U.S. in the 96 Olympic gold medal match in the 99 World Cup final. They haven't made the final of a major tournament since, and in fact, they haven't got past the quarterfinals since, failing to qualify for the last Olympics in the last World Cup as Morgan battles for that ball. Hands off for Wong. Mack didn't get quite enough behind that and first save for Wong Fei, the young goalkeeper for China. You know, there's been so much talk this year about Alex Morgan, but let's not forget Abby Wambach is having a tremendous season. She scored 23 goals and has eight assists. She's such a power player and she does such a nice job to play off of Alex Morgan. Right there she has that opportunity to get a ball back, doesn't connect with it quite as cleanly as she needs to, but those are the types of opportunities that the U.S. has to create more and do a little bit more. Could Abby maybe take a touch and attack and put herself even in a better position than just taking that one-time shot? Wambach flips but get hit hard there by the center back, Wong Dongni. And Wambach has stayed down. As you see Tom Sermali watching in one of the Luxury suites here at PBVA Compass Stadium. Good to see Wombach back on her feet. Let's take a look at this. And this is one of the challenges anytime in a friendly. Coaches always want their players to stay healthy. And right there you can see Abby Wombach going head to head. Abby's about as tough as they come, and she's uh, bouncing back up quickly. But this was part of what happened on Saturday. Uh, the players called the game chippy. We had a chance to talk to Lauren Cheney, and that was the word that she used. It was very chippy. And the, the Chinese players were kind of nicking and, 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 and pushing and, and doing a little bit of cheap fouling. And so certainly the health of the United States players is very important in these friendlies. Well, the nickname of this team is the Steel Roses, and I think they want to find that steel once again. It's lapel bet. Plays into the center, Cheney, under pressure. Able to get it away for Carly Lloyd. Oh, a good sidestep there with Kuwe. Early ball for Morgan. Again, you see China just collapse there in the center, but wayward touch finds Tobin Heath. Heath against Kuwe, and knocked away John Rui to come the other direction for China. Wang Li Su, looking to switch, and it will find in the end. On Peng. And you see Rampone easily cruising over to that loose ball. We get to see Lauren Cheney battling there as the ball's coming in. Carly Lloyd looking up, doing a nice job to change the point. And that's part of what the United States needs to do more of. Moving that ball quickly from one side to the other and trying to catch the Chinese defense sliding from left to right. Or the long switch for Mitz. Has it back. Immediately closed down by Chong Rui. Trying to play for Morgan. It will fall for in the end. And they cleared out wide. To the center back, Huang Yi Ni. Going there for Keith, who has it back. Trying to win a quarter, and does not. It's going to be a goal kick. John, as we sort of look at this game, you know, we, we mentioned at the, the, the top of the show some of the things that are important for the United States, but I'd like to add a couple to that. Um, in talking with Jill Ellis yesterday, she feels that it's very important for the U.S. to get in behind the back line, and specifically wide behind the two outside backs of that uh, young Chinese defense. Then the service becomes really important. The quality of the runs in the box and the quality of the server to pick out what the best run is certainly becomes one of the most important things. The last thing that Jill Ellis talked a lot about was that the United States needs to do a better job of breaking the pressure um, that th when China has the ball, they do such a good job of keeping possession. They made the United States chase a little bit on Saturday and she'd like to see um, that rhythm get interrupted a little bit faster. Li Ying there getting dispossessed to China forward, and now it's Tobin Heath. Drops on for Cheney. Cheney trying to find a pocket of 
base. Keith, good sidestep, fires from way out, and that's over the ball. It certainly had Wong Fei scrambling back. So Lauren Cheney, this is one of the things that she does best. You can see her swivel her head, take a quick look, and turn. And a nice job by Tobin Heath to as well rotate her hips. She sat back a little bit, got underneath that ball. But this is one of the challenges that the U.S. has. Tobin Heath likes to come central, and that's where the U.S. loses that width. The outside backs for the United States and Amy LaPelvet, Heather Mitz have got to help create some of that width. So the next ball might be able to go wide and then in behind the U.S. These shots from long distances um, really are not what the U.S. Uh, could benefit from the most. O'Reilly trying to play early. Morgan is offside. It was Wambach to flick, but it just took an extra second for that ball to fall to O'Reilly, and the Chinese center back's able to react. Well, you're talking about the wide players in Kindra, Deeson Abin. You've been watching this as well. What can you add? Well, that's exactly what I was just going to say, Lori. I saw Heather O'Reilly and, of course, Tobin Heath pinching in on both sides. And Heather Mitz made that run off the right side, and LaPelva was coming up the left side. But before that, both outside midfielders really standing with their heels on the sideline. So they are attempting to create that width, but they both are pretty tempted to kind of creep in there and get a little narrow at times. But luckily, Heather Mitz has a lot of speed, and she can really get up that right side out of the back. Wang Li Su. As the overlap cross instead comes off the back of Heath's head. Lloyd clearance only as far as Pu Wei. Trying to clip in towards Shang Rui. And dealt with by Sauerbrunn. The pal bet allowed to clear. U.S. on Saturday, by this time of the match, had two clear goal-scoring chances, the first of which Amy Rodriguez missing on a 1v1 opportunity. So a bit more resolve, perhaps, for China this evening. Sauerbrun trying to thread the needle, almost fell for Lloyd. And again, Hu Wei stepping up, battling hard, and draws a free kick. Hu Wei is such a seasoned veteran. There's a great story behind her career, John. She's tried to quit this team three times and retire, and every single time, the new coaching staff comes back to her and says, we need you, we need you in the center of the park. She's played in the center of the midfield. She's also been a center back for this squad. She is really the pivotal piece, the playmaker. She also is quite a free kick specialist, so maybe we'll have an opportunity late, later in the match uh, to see her skills. The Pelbet with the throw in towards Morgan. Trying to lay off there for Cheney, never got there. Here's Lloyd now. And Rampone, captain of this team. Couldn't lay back by Wambach, but O'Reilly couldn't quite get there in time. And they'll try the left. It's the Pelbet. Funnel for Morgan. And he gets a cross away. It's blocked behind for the United States' first corner kick of this match. And that's that big switch, John, that we're needing to see more of from the U.S. Came from one side through the midfield and getting Amy LaPelvet in a much higher space. She's able to find Alex Morgan just outside the 18. It's one of the most dangerous spots for Alex Morgan. Certainly in 2012, she scored a ton of goals right from that spot. Lauren Cheney, 11 assists this year. Second most on the team, kind of hidden. And Alex Morgan's assisting exploits. She'll send this one in. And closest to it was Sauerbrunn, but cleared away. By Wu Hayat. And now Chang Rui trying to clear the other way. Han Peng with the switch all the way for Bian, the other established veteran of this side. And Chang Rui. Bian up the wing. It's Han Peng chasing. To defend is Lapelbet. This is an errant pass, and Tobin Heath picks it up for the U.S. The one right back by Hu Wei. Her shot from distance not going to travel home solo. Hu Wei also interesting. It was actually a teammate of Abby Wambach's on the Washington Freedom back in 2002. Little W USA. So plenty of familiarity. Between those two tonight. Cheney looking long. He wants to switch the wings now. It's O'Reilly on the left and Heath on the right.
Lee Jiayue. Trying to play long and in fact too long for Zhang Rui. So as the women's game continues to evolve, I think one of, one of the challenges that the United States has had in their defense is that teams that have a lot of mobility up top of their forwards, and we're seeing this here with China, the center forward can pull the center back for the U.S. wide and out of position, and if they can find a quick switch, there are huge gaps in and behind uh, the U.S. defense, and that's something that, uh, that Jill Ellis alluded to about Saturday, is that they need to do a better job of passing players on and not getting pulled out of their shape quite as much uh, as they did on Saturday. Nikki Sauer run now. It's O'Reilly who's dropped to get the ball. Forward for Morgan. Bit of a heavy touch there. Able to keep it though under some pressure from Wang Li Su. Now Heather O'Reilly gets to the byline. The cross blocked out. Second corner kick for the U.S. upcoming. There's so many great options for the United States. You can keep your eye clearly on Abby Wambach at the back post. Carly Lloyd is tremendous in the air. And uh, people sometimes write off and they forget, but Alex Morgan as well, tremendous attacking balls from corner and wide positions. Scored one famous one with her head earlier this year as again Lauren Cheney prepares to take. Lofted ball, the keeper able to react, long fake. The second attempt there. And goalkeeping has been an Achilles heel for China for many years since the retirement of Gao Hong after 1999. They've gone out, they've recruited some volleyball players, and uh, they're continuing to try and convert athletes into being better goalkeepers. And so, Wang Fei, only 22 years old, this is great experience for her and preparation for their qualifications and hopefully the 2015 Women's World Cup. She was part of the Wailan side that won the Chinese Women's Super League this year, conceded 16 goals in 30 matches, so domestically at least has had a very successful season. As that's a mistake at the back there by Wang Dongni. The U.S. still trying to fashion a truly dangerous goal-scoring opportunity. They're not going to get one there as Heath misplays that ball. Well, John, it's important to remind fans that, you know, this is a victory tour, this is a celebration tour. And so the training for the United States has not been the same as if this was a qualifying tournament or a tournament that they're attempting to win. Players have actually been able to go home and uh, depart camp. They haven't just been together for the duration of all of these matches. And so there's a little bit more of an easygoing feeling to training. But the result of that is the players aren't quite as sharp as they need to be. Still no less motivated for win. We certainly got that yesterday talking to him. They want to finish this year strong, and Nikki Sauerbrunn is on the ball there, made the point that they want to show off Jill Ellis well. They want to send her off with good results, appreciative of the work that she's put in the last two months or so since Pia Sudhaga's resignation is, well, I couldn't quite control that ball from Rampone. Still pressuring, and the U.S. will win an attacking throw. Well, win forever is still the motto of this squad. And so, you know, although these games are quote-unquote just friendlies, it's important for these players to compete. They don't like to lose, and they want the opportunity to make sure that uh, they give Jill Ellis that due. She's done so much for this program and continues to help with youth development. Heath back for O'Reilly, thinking about the shot through traffic right to the goalkeeper, though, long fake. But the U.S. again, just resilience there, kind of digging through the ball in the traffic. Another shot from distance, unable to penetrate in behind the line, but a nice job of Heather O'Reilly to get herself in a position where she is able to pull the trigger and find a little bit of a seam there. But these balls are not going to have the same kind of probability as if the United States can get in behind. That's a pretty standard ball for Wong Fate to deal with. Love this skill by Wombach there a moment ago. Chaining now the switch. O'Reilly able to control that ball. Riley trying to clip through and return for Cheney to follow her either way. Mintz is pushed forward from a right back position. Riley that time, dispossessed by Chong Rui. She tried to turn. Beat down the pressure, forces the giveaway. Carly Lloyd, a pocket of space. Bit of a heavy touch there. Cheney steps in to clean it up. U.S. trying to build the pressure here. Mintz will go wide. It's Heather O'Reilly once again. Oh, Ronnie's cross, looking for Abby Wambach, and she's one closer to be a hands-on time.
all-time record, putting the U.S. on the board just inside of the 20-minute mark. This is the exact ball that I've been talking about, getting a ball from a wide position. The United States does a great job to be patient, to use that width. You can see Heather O'Reilly pulling herself out. She looks up, and look how this ball goes in behind the defense. It's between the white shirts and the orange shirts. That's what that means, in behind the defense. And I tell you what, a ball up in the air like that to Abby Wambach's head, 99 times out of 100, winds up at the back of the net. Goal 149 of Abby Wambach's career, now just nine behind Mia Hamm's all-time mark. 61st of those 149, she has scored with her head. That's better than a 40% clip. And for Wambach, her 24th of the season, that's her second best output in a calendar year in her career. She's again been overshadowed by Morgan. As we take a look at what was O'Reilly's 11th assist of the season. Well, a nice job by Heather Mitz to play this ball wide. O'Reilly puts it on her outside foot, bends it in behind China's back line. Abby Wambach does a great job to float away and find that little gap on the back side of the center back for China. Long Fei, not much she's going to be able to do with that. Wambach, who made her debut her senior year at Florida back in September of 2001. One of the absolute pillars and most important players both on and off the field this U.S. women's team has ever had. Now we'll see how that goal affects the game. John Rui to click off the back of her heel. Now O'Reilly, sensational service on the goal, trying to come the other way. Quickly for Morgan. He's onside. All back making a late run back post. Heath also charging in the cross further towards Wombat. Good punch there by the goalkeeper, Wong Fei. Sour Brun somehow able to find Morgan through all the traffic. She'll try her luck from distance and the goalkeeper, Wong Fei, on top of it again. But she is getting pelted in the Chinese goal right now. So O'Reilly plays a nice ball from a wide position. Actually, she's coming centrally, but great ball here with her left foot. And finding Alex Morgan in a perfect seam. Not a great first touch, but as she looks up, the numbers in the box aren't the best. Abby Wombeck was at the back post, and uh, I believe Tobin Heath was coming in centrally. There needs to be a third runner somewhere around the top of the box that Alex Morgan could have a better opportunity to choose based on what the Chinese defense is taking away. Morgan's pressure forcing the air and pass, but Lapel unable to control it. As you see O'Reilly tonight, it's her 178th appearance. It's actually temporarily tying Shannon Box for 10th on the all-time list until and unless Box comes on the field in the second half. What's interesting is that those two made their debuts years apart age-wise. O'Reilly was 17, junior in high school when she made her first appearance for the United States. Box was 26, actually playing for Tom Sermani with the New York Power at WUSA. Well, and we've been talking about this new women's professional league that's starting. That's a great story with Shannon Box. It was actually her role in the professional league that opened up the eyes of April Heinrichs to believe that Shannon Box could make that transition and play at the next level. That league is what catapulted Shannon Box into the U.S. women's national team. And, you know, the rest is history. She's done a tremendous job as a defensive center mid for the U.S. You think of the number of really, really good college players that are just finishing up giving them the opportunity to make that next leap, crack their way into this U.S. team. Sauerbrunn pressured, able to get it away back to Solo, who's had very little to do through 24 minutes. There's Shannon Box. We'll probably see her in the second half, I would imagine, but what a tremendous ball winner and, uh, you know, just such a personality. In, in talking with Jill Ellis yesterday, she feels boxy, as they call her, is playing some of the best soccer of her career. Long switch for O'Reilly. The control off the chest, bodied off it though. 
And Lee Chai-Wei, who gives away the free kick. And now Cheney to take. Sauerbrunn has come forward. Wombach with both arms outstretched to the edge of the box, trying to get Cheney's attention. Cheney driven and not the best ball. Only as far as the pelvic. She'll try her luck for distance. It takes a deflection. And it's called wide. Was able to keep it in play, Wong Fei. Now trying to spring in the counter quickly up to Wan Li Su. Pressured by Morgan. And Alex Morgan, the forward, tracking all the way back to make the work defensively there. Amy LaPelvit does a great job to get a hold of this. A little deflection makes it difficult for Wong Fei. A little two-touch goalkeeping there. She bats it down and then collects it on the backside. But more long-distance shooting. Amy LaPelvit, the left back for the United States, getting herself into some great attacking positions. It was LaPelvit who won the ball a moment ago, and beginning this U.S. possession. Rampone trying to pick out an option. It's Lloyd. Threading the needle. Lovely ball for Tobin Heath. Has Walmack in front of her. And it's Abby Walmack going for a second, but pulls it wide. Some great balls being thread right up the middle of the park here. A nice turn by Tobin Heath. Again, in a central position. Abby Walmack gets herself into that little seam between the two Chinese defenders and just doesn't quite get a hold of the ball. And does a nice job to keep her head down, but her hips don't quite get a hold of the ball for her to get clear contact. And again, ever closer to that all-time mark, which people around this team have said they thought was never going to be broken. Walmack certainly, you expect, will do so to say nothing of Alex Morgan and the scoring rate she already has very early on in her career. Kulai able to get it wide. It's the right back. Huang Yini. Going to make the switch. Mitz is there and pushes the header back to Hope Solo. Solo breaking her own record for wins in a calendar year on Saturday. Long ball. A little too far for Wambach, but falls for Cheney. is able to win a third corner kick. Took it quickly. Chaney on it. And trying to hand back for Heath, but those two were not on the same page. Well, it's no secret, John, that uh, Pia Sunhaga really oriented her team and her attacking prowess around Abby Wambach. And so I think that's going to be one of the uh, fun dynamics to watch as Tom Sermani starts to um, create his own dynamic and what this new style of the U.S. will be under him. Um, Abby is just tremendous inside the box. She is the type of player you want on your team. Her game continues to grow, her passing, her vision, those types of things, but certainly her specialty, balls that come through in the air as we saw in her goal in the 20th minute, uh, but also just her awareness in and around the box. She is so dangerous because defenders are constantly aware of her. Zhang Rui wins a free kick in the center for China. Who I want to go quickly there. Up the wing now, Wang Li Su. And China having a very hard time just getting into the attacking third in this match. Li Chai Yue. Similarly, they've reshuffled their back four a little bit, it looks like. Trying to adapt to the problems the U.S. is causing. It's now forward for O'Reilly. Ball back inside. Lloyd. Behind wall back, but it got there. Now O'Reilly has Morgan making the run in front of her. Well, he already won assist, clips it into the box. 
let her away there. Uh, Hong Yi Ni. And a bit of a mistake there by Lee Chai Wei. It'll be a fourth corner kick for the United States in this half. O'Reilly, quick and short. It's Morgan comes to get it. Lovely pullback by Alex Morgan. The cross away only as far as Mitz, just trying to place that header top corner, but and put it on frame. You know, Alex Morgan is just such a complete player. We've watched her just erupt over this last year. The thing that I find interesting is only in a third of the time has she moved herself up to be number 12 in the all-time goal score. She sits right behind Carly Lloyd, who has 42 goals. Right now, she has 38, Alex Morgan. And it's amazing. Let's think. Let's multiply that by three and think about what her statistics potentially could be down the road. She is truly the future of this squad. Opportunity, perhaps, is Ali Wambach. Trying to cut back, but broken up on the outside. Way tracking back. It's off for a U.S. throw. It was Wong Dong Ni, the initial defending. Good turn there by Cheney. One on three, needs some help. Will he get it back wide? He's had it poked away by Wong Li Su. Mistake though, Wong back, back on it. Been a little bit sloppy just now. In the second game, and Five days for both of these teams. It's been a long year for the U.S. and for China still adjusting to a long travel stretch and a time change. Look, Helbet's early cross. Just wide of that near post. And again, to continue your superlatives on Alex Morgan, as we mentioned in the pregame on Saturday becoming just the second player in U.S. history to achieved 20 goals and 20 assists in a calendar year. Mia Hamm, 1998, the other. She has the third most goals in a calendar year, the third most assists in a calendar year, the second most points in a calendar year. And oh, by the way, is a finalist for the FIFA World Player of the Year, which will be given out at the beginning of January. Wambach and Marta, five-time winner from Brazil, they being the others as Mitz has it knocked away. So the question people constantly are asking are, what is it that makes Alex Morgan so special? Is it just her speed? She's number two on the speed charts here for the United States, and remarkably, uh, Christy Rampone still holds that record. The oldest player on the team is still the fastest player, but Alex Morgan does a little bit of everything. She's such an artist with the ball. She scores in so many ways, her left foot, her right foot, with her head. She can bend a ball. She finds just that open space. At full pace, she can beat goalkeepers on and breakers. Morgan runs. now, the attempt as she pulled it wide. Couldn't quite get full contact as she did take a deflection in the end off the defender, down for a corner. Just to finish that point, I mean, I just think it's so exciting to watch her. She really is the future for all the young players out there. Alex Morgan is the complete player. She tracks back on defense. She does everything. And the beauty is she does it with a smile. Posting up on the goalkeeper, Wang Fei, for Lauren Cheney's corner kick. Fans rising to their feet on that end of the ground. Cheney driven all the way through. Kind of preparing a sub down below. As they try to launch a counterattack. John Rui just couldn't keep that ball in play. See John Rui scored in May against this U.S. team as Rapino and some of the U.S. subs get up and get loose. Six substitutions available in this match, and we'd expect to see them all. Certainly has been the case in the previous matches on this tour. Once again, John Rui on the ball. Tackled by Lloyd, but can't win it. Only Su. Not back here for Pu Wei. The team's captain trying to go straight up the middle for John Rui, but it's Broken up by the Pelbet. Back to get it, Lee Ying, the 19-year-old. New way again wide. Wang Li Su is out there working on the Pelbet. 
Takes the cross away, and China win their first corner kick of this match. It'll be Wong Mee Su, the 21-year-old, scored a goal against Australia in Tom Sermani's final game in charge a couple of weeks ago to send this in. Hope Solo perhaps to be tested for the first time tonight. Driven in, comes all the way through. John Rui now, trying to find space for the shot, blocked out by Sauerbrunn in another corner upcoming. Uh, nice double dummy here, the ball comes through. Two players for China, let it go. Zhang Rei gets a hold of it. As you can see, she's off balance, falling away. Doesn't contact the ball very well, but able to create a second corner. Uh, Wang Li Su is coming across to take it, and she's stopping and chatting with each individual teammate. Trying to create a set piece on the fly. As we're about 10 minutes before halftime. Abby Wambach's 20th minute goal, the difference so far. The U.S. to be tested once again, perhaps. One-year-old drives it in. And that's going to be out for a goal kick last off a Chinese head. And they have waved off the substitute. They had the forward, Wang Shan Shan, up and ready to go. And how away. The coach, I guess, liking the last two minutes of attack. And going to hold off. Well, that's just a classic coaching move. You warm up the sub and you make the one forward that you have on the field nervous. She gets a couple touches it's and all okay, mind games. we'll let you stay in the game. Look here, go stand by the fourth official just That's to make right. sure she knows that you're serious. As Lloyd gives away the free kick in the center. Line for Li Chai Wei. Pu Wei, the switch. Better spell the last five minutes or so from China. For that by Heath. Clearly China's trying to play at their own pace, slow the United States down, and that's a good plan. And that trying to keep up with that fitness of the U.S., this young team that China has on the pitch, there's no way they're going to be able to sustain that. And they just played three days ago. Uh, so it's a nice job by China to kind of slow that rhythm down. Heath on the breakout. Couple options for Wants it herself, but puts it high. Doesn't seem too bothered by it either. Yeah, Tobin picks this ball up and, and penetrates. She's so good on the dribble. Takes the ball right to the top of the D. You have an opportunity there to see Alex Morgan is in a wide position. Probably a little slip pass in there. Could have created better opportunities. There were good numbers at the back post. But Tobin, he's teeing that ball up, taking a shot on her own. And Poe now is... Chinese press a little bit higher up the field. Their goal scoring opportunities in the match on Saturday. Most of them coming from forcing turnovers in the U.S. half. All box the flick. Morgan able to control, able to turn to face. Was trying to get away for Heath there, who was open in space, but does win a free kick. China not happy about it. And an extra talking to coming from the referee, Christian Shirek, in our first yellow card of the match, in fact. Given to Wu Haiyan. So I call this just quality defending. It was a nice double there by China. Everyone knows that Alex Morgan would be so dangerous on the turn. It was a good job to double up, but then uh, communicating with the referee after the fact and resulting in that yellow card. It looked like Wu Haiyan even may have had contact with the ref. She reacted very sharply. And now a dangerous set piece opportunity for the U.S. to try to add their second. Heath, Cheney, and Lloyd all over it. And everyone back behind the ball in front of Wong Fei's goal. It'll be Carly Lloyd through the wall. Well saved, Wong Fei. And the rebound cleared wide. The ball never went out. Heath was going to shepherd it out for a throw. Had to come play it instead. It's trying to find Shaney. It's backwards off of Bion. And 
prevents it from being a corner by Wu Haiyan. Information of the yellow card to the 19 year old. Who again was playing in that under 20 World Cup against the U.S. a few months ago. What a step up to be on this field tonight. Mitz was trying to win a corner and will not. Let's go. See you on the So great view here of the wall. And you can see a fantastic hit by Carly Lloyd. Looking up, trying to find that corner. That ball is on frame. Nice save by Wong Fei. But set pieces are so important in, in the women's game. So many goals are scored from those positions. And you know, for the young players out there, it's just about repetition. Taking a bag of balls out, hitting them over and over and over again. Not the best goal kick. Morgan fighting. Morgan able to get there. Trying to work it. A chance there. She had Heath in front in the end. Doesn't get the call. And it's out for a goal kick. You saw the goalkeeper, Wong Fei. She's been kind of working that shoulder. And it wasn't the best ball in the goal kick either. Well, a great win. And get to see some of the speed here by Alex Morgan using her body getting in front shielding that ball and just fighting to try and get a shot off great job by Tobin Heath to be in an onside position at the back post Wang Yi the defender there had an awful lot of Morgan shirt as this time they play it short and it's Wang Yi unable to control it so that may be a concern for China going into the second half it's one back by Lloyd gets it from Heath Lloyd muscled off the ball by John Rui and another free kick given right on the edge of the area. Kind of very unhappy about this. And this is some of the youthfulness coming out in China. Not uh, using their bodies, sort of reaching for balls. As soon as a limb departs from your body, the referee is usually going to blow their whistle. They need to move their feet and, and keep a stronger stance to prevent giving up these fouls to the United States. This is such a dangerous area for Carly Lloyd. Lloyd once again drives it, but this time rising up into the stands. Now Lloyd scored on Saturday, just her second goal since the double she scored in the gold medal match. Third best in the team this year with 14 goals. And again, those other pieces that have had really tremendous years that have been lost the slightest bit in the headlines that come to Alex Morgan and Abby Wamba. And two straight giveaways on goal kicks for China. Yeah. Return to normal service and in fact a booming kick by Wong Fei. He must win it immediately back up for Morgan just behind her in fact. punt the touch there from Li Ying Raleigh wins it back intercepted by Wu Wei John Rui Su Haiyan still carrying forward the right back up the wing Wang Li Su it's the cross away flips on the near post and just going right across the mouth of goal from Li Ying Beat her marker to that one. Could put it on frame. And a great service here. You can see that space. And the Chinese player there just holds onto the ball for one split second. And that puts them in a position behind the U.S. defense. A near post service. A great run. And just nobody following to that far post. You can see frustration on the face of the Chinese players. They know they're not going to get many of those. But just uh, in a poorly place run to the far post. You've got to get a player into that position so they can finish any of those back post taps. Lloyd finding to win that ball. Another free kick won by the U.S. in the attacking half and Hao Wei, the Chinese coach, really going after the fourth official. That's him in the suit. And Lloyd this time up too far out for her to have a go. It'll be Rampone, in fact, over it as Wong Fei gets her charges set. Rampone lifts it in. Knocked down just in front of Sauerbrunn. One minute extra, we understand, at the end of this half. Now 
Rob Stone and Kendra D. Sinabin will have their thoughts and highlights on the first half of action. Again, it was scoreless at the break on Saturday, so although the U.S. would love to perhaps have a little bit more, this is better off than they were a couple days ago. Confirmation now of one minute extra at the discretion of the referee. Back to Juan Yini. Long switch not going to get through. O'Reilly picks it up. Reps on for one last chance. Here's Cheney trying to turn. Mitz making a big run forward. Does get through to the right back. Lloyd, a little control and pressure. Early cross too far in front of any of the blue shirts. No rush to get us back underway. So he plays it wide for O'Reilly. Abby! Taken away, flew away. Free checks her watch. It's Rampone. Sees out the end of the first half. Now Abby Wombach score, putting her. Within nine of Mia Hamm's record, what'd you like for that first half, Lori? Well, I liked variety. I liked variety from the United States. Several players getting chances and opportunities. From a wide position, Heather O'Reilly, for me, was the player of the first 45 minutes, if you will. She took shots. She was in a wide position. She had great services, had the assist on Abby Wambach's goal, and is just really working her tail off from that wide position out on the flank. Highlights and analysis coming up from Rod and Kendra. 45 minutes down, 45 to go here in Houston, and our score... United States won, China nil. This holiday season, Fox Soccer teams up with the U.S. Soccer Foundation to create chances for at-risk youth in urban areas by supporting Soccer for Success. The after-school development program that uses soccer as a tool to provide structured physical activity, nutrition, education, and mentorship. To learn more and to give the gift of soccer today, visit creatingchances.org. The U.S. women halfway through their fourth match all-time here in Houston, their first since 2004, and their first here at this, one of the new crown jewels in the American soccer landscape, BBVA Compass Stadium. Abby Wombach's goal in the 20th minute. The difference in that first half. And Lori Walker, we're expecting a couple changes already at halftime. What would you like to see, perhaps a bit better or different, from Jill Ellis, the interim coach in this U.S. team in the second half? Well, I think that the United States has done a nice job to attack from those wide flank positions. But uh, they have outshot China, I believe, 15 to 1 or 15 to 2. And those are the statistics that Tom Sermani would be looking at, creating so many opportunities and chances. The United States should be doing better. And it's not so much that Wong Fei has made tremendous saves, it's just the accuracy of the shooting. Might require one more pass or one more little touch to get that ball on front. And as you saw, it's been since the 85th minute of a 2-2 draw with Germany. Backed on October 23rd that the U.S. has conceded a goal on this fan tribute tour. Six wins, no losses, two draws. Scored 28, conceded six in those eight matches so far. And you see a couple of subs, Megan Rapino. Coming onto the field with the team, Rachel Bueller as well. And we'll reset those for you as they're confirmed. A line change for Jill Ellis and the U.S. here at halftime. You see Heather O'Reilly who played that superb ball to create the goal. Shannon Box running onto the field. You see Rapino there, Nicole Barnhart as well. So a number of changes and for Barnhart especially it's a name we don't hear a lot because Hope Solo plays so often in goal what can you tell us about her well Nicole Barnhart has been such a great servant to this program being the backup to Hope Solo for so long uh, she's got great range she's about five foot ten uh, played at Stanford she's just a, a, a very strong goalkeeper can handle things in the air but she's also on the backside of her career she's 31 years old we saw her after training she ices up and, uh, you know, it's been a challenge to continue to be that backup for Hope Solo. Shannon Box retaking 10th on the all-time appearance list. And she's coming out to make the 179th appearance of her career. You saw Rachel Bueller is on. Megan Rapino is on. 
And we're set to go in the second half from Houston. The U.S. in the blue, China the white. Second of three meetings in eight days' time between these sides. It was 2-0 in Detroit, but scoreless at the half on Saturday. And the U.S. already won better as Nicole Barnhart gets her first touch of the ball here in this match and hands off to her fellow sub, Rachel Bueller, who actually made her debut for the U.S. against China. Back in 2008, while back to Flick, helped on by O'Reilly, could not get it all the way through to Morgan. Rapino took the place of Tobin Heath at the half. Box flips it forward. This is Lloyd now, Morgan. And Carly Lloyd, Wambach lays it off, kept it play. Rapino, back wide for Lloyd. Cuts around the defender. Lloyd fires it a goal, and it just misses the upper right hand corner. A great job here by Carly Lloyd. Putting herself in a wide position. She opens up, squares herself, takes that nice little touch, and just cracks this ball. Just missing slightly wide. But this is that extra touch I'm talking about. By taking just that little step, you can just see she missed by inches. But she put uh, the Chinese defender on her heels and gave herself a totally different look and a much more dangerous look. Lloyd only denied a goal on a free kick by a fine save from Wang Fei. In that first half as Christy Rampone takes a bit of a knock in the aerial challenge. And the U.S. will push just about everyone up here, take this free kick from midfield. Only Yi Ying, the center forward, staying up upfield for China. And even now she retreats quite a ways. It's Rampone drives this ball into the box, takes a bounce, comes backwards off the box, Fired at the keeper. Well saved. Wong Fei once again. Heather O'Reilly denied. Heather O'Reilly continuing to have a tremendous game here. Fantastic long service. You can see the Chinese defense having to back up. That ball drops right into that seam. And a great job by Heather O'Reilly to get that ball on the frame. A nice save by Wong Fei. John Rui playing forward for his strike partner, Li Ying. But Barnhart off her line as Rampone shouldered her off. Looks set to make their first substitution of the wings. Again, they were prepared to switch up the forward line. Midway through that first half and thought better of it after a good spell. Morgan now wide for Rapino. Able to drive across in. It's an awkward bounce, but that'll do to get it clear. John Rui dispossessed by Box. Box will shoot from distance. It takes a deflection in Wong Fate. Able to get her body behind it. Now shoot on side appears to be the instructions for the U.S. coming out of the second half as Morgan forces the turnover. Rampone, Lombok pushed off it. Juan Yini committing the foul to center back. Now Lauren Chaney subbed off at half, so it's Heather O'Reilly over this one. See Bueller's come forward from the back line. And China will make their substitution now, in fact, before it's taken. It'll be Wang Yi Su coming off and the 23-year-old Chen Guaixin who comes on. So more or less a straight swap on the outside. As O'Reilly now drives in the free kick. And he was unable to really do anything with it immediately. O'Reilly, with the help of Lapel, then able to win it back. Rampone finds Rapino. Mistake touch there. Great tackle. Ooh, it does come back. And the Chinese player, that's Chen Guaixin, who just came on. A bit upset and a little bit of pain down the field. You can see Megan Rapino saying she got all of the ball, but she comes from just slightly behind square and puts Zen Gaoxin right on the ground. I think that was her first touch of the game. Megan Rapino welcoming her into the field. They're trying to preparing their second substitution right now. It's, it's getting really chippy in the center and box the recipient of a hard challenge by Li Ying, the 19-year-old. 
she seems to have gotten the worst of it. And Poem pressured, able to find O'Reilly. Trying to win the ball, but unable to do anything with it. Back to Nicole Barnhart, making her 46th appearance. Was a regular in 2010, part of 2011. And Hope Solo was out with surgery. It's Harley Lloyd now in the ball. Lloyd trying to find Wallback or Morgan. And then the end intercepted. Jim Gay Sheen. Able to control that. And here comes the second switch. With the 23-year-old Wong Chen forward coming on for the midfielder BN. Was a 19-year-old, started two matches of the 2003 World Cup here in the U.S. And she makes way five minutes into the second half. Early on, Lori, what have you thought of the Chinese approach here in the second half? Well, I think that uh, China is still playing out of their 4-5-1. You'll see 27 and 25 kind of swapping that responsibility. Um, but I thought that China did a, a nice job towards the end of the first half to push their outside midfielders in a much higher position. That makes the outside back for the U.S. very uncomfortable. But really what China needs to do is just get a hold of the ball and keep the ball. They're just doing a ton of chasing right now, and that's just going to wear them out. Sauerbrunn from Rapino. Now back from O'Reilly. Mueller for lapel bet. We'll find Rapino in a pocket of space. It's Morgan, bit of a heavy touch there. Wu Haiyan, Eric Pass. And Wu Haiyan, one of the six players from the China team, actually played against the U.S. the Under-20 World Cup a couple of months ago, who's on the roster for this. And second yellow card of the match coming out on Li Ying. She had a full-blooded challenge on Shannon Box a moment ago and catching Amy Lapelbet from behind just there. <laughs> Li Ying, another of those, the 19-year-old. One as a sub in that match against the U.S. And again, Christy Rampone preparing a long delivery. Just towards Wabach. He gets some contact on it. Morgan fighting for the second ball and commits the foul. Yi Ni, the left back. Forward for Ku Wai, but again, just unable to fashion any kind of possession spell or any kind of attacking chance, China. All back. Who control off the chest? Finds O'Reilly. He's trying to play it wide there for Sauerbrunn. And just broken up by Huang Yi Ni. Haiyan. Going to turn there on the outside. Substitute Jen Guaixin, but Lapel that good recovery and wins the ball back. China sits right now in the world rankings of FIFA at number 19, and, and you, know, you can start to see what a big gap there is between the United States, who sits at one and number 19. O'Reilly chasing, not going to get there in time. Cleared out to safety by Huang Yi Ni. I think it's great, though, that China is re-establishing themselves or trying to rebuild their program, have some consistency in the coaching realm, and as well, developing these young players to prepare them for uh, qualifications for the next World Cup. It's the best way to do it, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to take some time, but this is definitely a much improved side for China. Rapino dumped to the turf as she released the pass there. Chen Guaixin committed the infraction. She'll get a talking to and a verbal warning for the referee. Well, we heard it on Saturday about this game between the teams. Rough play, physical, chippy stuff, and we're seeing a lot more of that. 
in this match tonight. As first, Rapino can take this free kick. Rapino, through some ball set in Sauerbrunn, actually running away from it. Chen Guaixin clearing the midfield only as far as Christy Rampone. Now box to serve from deep. Takes a bounce, it finds Wambach unable to react too quickly. Wasn't necessarily expecting that ball to get there the way it did. She's looking for her second goal. Rapino keeps it in play. Lloyd, O'Reilly. Trying to prepare another substitution in the run of this second half down below. Ma Xiaoxu, who started it forward on Saturday. Morgan steals in to win the ball back. Rapino. Sandwich there. Free kick U.S. And another card coming out, this time to the captain, Pu Wai, and the Chinese bench is furious at that down below. Third yellow card given to China in this match. And he was taking that quickly, trying to catch the Chinese defense unawares, but Ends up wide. Well, they say Laurie familiarity breeds contempt, and you get the sense there's going to be a lot of it in Saturday's third match of three between these teams. Well, it's one of the challenges. You know, you can sit and you can watch the United States play, and you can appreciate how good they are. But until you're physically on the field with them, you can't anticipate their speed. And it's all the way across the field. And a lot of times what happens are these chipping little fouls. And this is certainly going to season this young China team. But... Uh, there's a lot of fouls happening right now. Some of that might be fatigue on the part of China, uh, but too many yellow cards and give the United States. It's something important. They want to keep our, their players uh, healthy and make sure that everyone gets out of this game injury-free. But right now, China is, is trying to establish themselves a little bit and, and stand up to the bully, if you will. Now, the other one's doing the bullying. Six fouls in 12 minutes of the second half as we saw that switch in the 24-year-old. Ma Xiaoxu is on. Rapino, lovely ball from Alex Morgan. Rapino takes all the way to the byline before crossing towards Wambach. It's a head on a third away from right in front. Look, it looked like she may have had that covered anyway. Bueller back out wide for Sauerbrunn. Got it up there by Li Jiwei. Oh, a little too far in front of Lapel Bet. As Tom Sermani watches, he sits here in the stadium, he's observing this team, you know, potentially some of the things that he could be making notes about. Uh, in the goal, of course, there has to be a bigger pool of goalkeepers that the United States can draw from. Right now, it's been the, the same three for many of the last years. In the back, the defenders need to be better with their possession. They've got to connect passes, and the percentage of their passes um, has to be something that the United States continues to pay attention to. It's not until the late rounds of a big tournament that the U.S. actually has to be great defenders. Up until those points, they've got to be good playmakers, getting forward, helping to start the attack, and just keeping possession for the U.S. Well, before that, the bigger issue for them is how to deal with all this physical play from China. Kendra D. Sen, up, and what say you for how the U.S. needs to react to this as Ma Shan Shu's offside? Coach Sermani wanting from this group. They want to avoid injury coming out of these games. Thank you, Kendra. Held that now on the ball. For the U.S. trying to pass their way through. Wambach couldn't quite crane her neck to get that header on target for Rapino's run. That time take the shot from Juan Bonny. They wanted to take this quick and short. 
penalty box. And then Alex Morgan. Three white shirts immediately shadowing her. And that's going to be out for a U.S. throw down to the corner flag as we hit the hour mark here in Houston. Abby Wombat's goal in the 20th minute. Show the difference in this match. Increasingly physical play from China and increasing goal mount pressure from the U.S. as the second half is worn along. It's a great throw by Rapino. Just took a deflection away from Box. John Rui tracking back there. Lloyd able to turn and get away. Harley Lloyd now. Box calling for it top of the D. Lloyd keeps it herself. Fires deflected wide. And out for another U.S. corner. Well, if I was to have been critical of the U.S. In that first half, I would have said that the central midfielders for the United States were not involved in the attack as much. And right away in, in this second half, you see Lloyd and Box in a higher position, staying more involved and being more dynamic. Rapino doesn't want you to hear it, but sends in the corner kick down. Locked it in back, Carson a free header and in for the second goal for the U.S. Carly Lloyd, two and two for her. Again, set piece is so dangerous in the women's game. You got two targets back there, Abby Wambach and Carly Lloyd. Lloyd just elevates herself, drops her chin off the far post. A great finish by Carly Lloyd. You can see lurking in the background was the shadow of Abby Wambach. A nice organization there by the United States. And China just not able to battle with the U.S. in the air. That's definitely something they're going to have to work on. Uh, if they expect to, to elevate themselves to a higher level at the, at the international game, China just is not as strong in the air. And they've got to get bodies, at least, on the best headers for the United States. 15th goal this year, third best for this U.S. side from Carly Lloyd. Megan Rapino with her 11th assist of the season. Ty Lauren Cheney for number two on the team. A substitution for China after the goal. Wang Ling Ling, 24-year-old defender, was a part of the 120 World Cup team in 2008 that beat Cindy Liu and Alex Morgan. Coming on for Han Peng. Wambach now on this ball into the top. Has Morgan in the center. Wambach good touch. Wambach fires, deflected in. 3-0 U.S. The United States is uh, bringing those numbers down as far as creating chances to now the goals. A great job here by Abby Wambach to bring that ball down. I was critical of this in the first half, but this little extra touch, she looks up, she doesn't like what she sees. The Chinese defender commits herself completely, and Abby does a great job to cut the ball back, find some open space, collect herself and bend the ball into the far post. A very nice job by Abby Wambach. We saw the slight deflection from the defender taken away from the goalkeeper, but that doesn't happen if you don't shoot and create the opportunity. So, as it stands, Abby Wambach, goal number 150 of her U.S. career, and within eight of Mia Hamm's all-time mark. Now an opportunity to go for her hat trick in the final 27 minutes. Goals just about a minute apart from Lloyd and Wambach there. Aquino steals in and forces the giveaway. Rapino finds Box. Switch now for Becky Sauerbrunn, who switched out to the right back spot at halftime. Around John Rui. Lloyd was trying to lay that back. Went for Box, actually. Unable to do so, but Sauerbrunn wins it back. O'Reilly had the setup on both of Walmart's goals tonight. Wants a free kick there, not given. It'll be a throw. Not at all happy about that. Instead of the referee, but the line's almost closer to it.
rally now for Lloyd. Again, Carly Lloyd. Finds Megan Rapino. Trying to go wide for the pelvet there. Good step up. And the defender Lee UA. Let's take a look once again at the set of the letter this third goal. Well, we mentioned at the, in the first half, don't forget about Abby Wombach. She's having a tremendous year. But from a wide position, Heather O'Reilly sends this great ball in. Wombach takes a great cutback. And with her left foot, is able to bend that ball around Wong Fei and find the far post. Now, we had a discussion last week, John, that we never really got to finish. If, you know, if you've got to pick the player of the year, Wombach, Alex Morgan, which way do you go? Not Marta? I, I, I tell you what, I, I don't even know why Marta's on that list. She's a <laughs> tremendous player, but not in 2012. You know, you got to keep in mind, Abby Wombach scored five goals in the Olympics. A tremendous season that she has been having. But I think for me, the piece that pushes me over the edge, if I had to vote, Alex Morgan's assists have just really made her a total, complete player. She's done so much for this team by creating goal chances, but also by setting her teammates up. Fantastic year, breakthrough year for Alex Morgan. She would get my vote for the FIFA Player of the Year, not Marta. One of the absolute best statistical years in the history of this U.S. women's team, and in just her third as a part of the program. Only her first as a regular starter, for that matter. China preparing to make a, another substitution here. We're bringing off Jean Rui, one of those two forward slash attacking midfielders they've had in their formation. And coming on as a 20-year-old defender, Liu Shanshan, another one of the players from the Under-20 World Cup team this fall. Christy Rampo now on the free kick. Wombach does get a piece of it. Ends up well wide, though. the center there for Wong Chen, the substitute. It's a back from O'Reilly. Go dance her way out of traffic. Up the channel for Heather O'Reilly. Has options in the box. O'Reilly looking for a third assist. It's Rapino charging in. Collision with the defender and the foul is going to go against the U.S. player. As that's Wu Haiyan who stayed down. Wu Haiyan. Only 19 years of age. I think she's going to go to bed tonight and have nightmares of Megan Rapino. the two of them just bonking heads all over the field. She's doing a nice job, though, to keep her body in front of Megan Rapino and just not allow her to get a shot off there. Curtain call now for Abby Wambach. Score of two goals tonight to 150 in her career. You see them both. One assist and the other set up but not given as an assist for Heather O'Reilly. Sixth time this year. She has scored twice in a match and on comes the super sub Sydney LaRue. Her 13 goals off the bench this year by a wide stretch. The record in U.S. women's history. Poor Barnhart hasn't had a whole lot to do since Coming on for Hope Solo at halftime, clearing long. Lapel bet, under hit there for Rapino. In talking with Tom Sermani yesterday, one of the things that he mentioned that was really important to uh, this team and as he makes the transition is creating competition amongst players. And it's really great to see the U.S. players creating that competition amongst each other. Morgan and her success certainly is raising Abby Wambach's game. But now let's talk about this young Sydney LaRue. She's basically moved into the role that Alex Morgan was in just a year ago. Every time she comes into a match, she is dangerous. She's got 13 goals on the year, one assist. 
had a chance to speak with her yesterday. She says, my goal is to become a starter. I'm not sure who she's going to displace, but she's working on her defending. She's working to be consistent in training, and she is one heck of a goal scorer. Another future, uh, you know, forward for this program that Tom Sermani's got to be excited about having all of these options in his attacking end. Well, again, we told you LaRue's story earlier this fall on the fan tribute tour. Born in British Columbia, came to the U.S., finishing up high school in Arizona, went to college at UCLA, could have played for the Canadian national team, of course, chose the U.S. instead. And to say that she will be a central figure at the 2015 World Cup in Canada is probably an understatement. As you see there, Tom Sermon, who's been watching for a box tonight, and he won't take charge until the 1st of January officially, but just taking a back seat on the last leg of this fan tribute tour. For 20 minutes to play now in Houston. And the U.S. wanted to make this comfortable. And so far, so good for them as Hong Ling Ling gets the effort away, but looking wide and Barnhart able to shuffle across and grab it. Back to his box. Good tackle by Sidney LaRue. Coming from behind, but got all ball there. There's Jen Guaijin, who was dispossessed. That's that work rate that I was referring to by Sidney LaRue, tracking all the way back and making sure that she's doing her best to regain possession of that ball. She continues to work at that level on both sides of the ball. Her game will really explode. She's got to get herself to fit to the international level and just more consistent, both attacking as well as her defending. But let me tell you, that is one personality. You know, you get around Sydney LaRue and she, she is just dynamic and contagious with her energy. Lapel bet inside for Rapino. Box making the late run top of the D, but it was well read by the defender, never got through. Kuwe coming the other direction. Kind of trying to spring the counter. Wong Ling Ling able to keep it in play. Going to get away from Rapina, who does just enough, though. And Rachel Bueller picks it up. And the switch for Wong Ling Ling, if she can chase this down. She's only have one of the box just now. Now some late runners, so she gets the cross away. Attempt at the bicycle there by Wong Chen. Lloyd is fouled. And Hu Wei is already in the book with a yellow card, getting an extra warning from our referee, Christian Shirek. As you see, Hao Wei, head coach of this China side, at the East Asian Cup in South Korea coming up this summer. In 2014, the Asian Cup, that'll double his qualifiers for the 2015 World Cup. But again, the China team that was a dominant force in the late 90s, made it to two straight major tournament finals, didn't even qualify for the last Olympics or the last World Cup. So this is work cut out for him as Morgan nods it on LaRue, unable to get there and keep it in play. LaRue, who actually just finished up her studies at UCLA. That's right, she just graduated last week, so congratulations That's to exactly. U.S. going to make a sub here. Alex Morgan will get her curtain call, and on will come Amy Rodriguez, who in Detroit on Saturday became the 28th player to reach 100 caps in her career. So Morgan kept off the score sheet, and she's close to a few very serious records for both goals and assists. Plenty of fans for her here in Houston, and where this team goes. And that's just going to stay in play. Wong Ling Ling. Forward now. Ma Shao Shu. Good ball out wide. A chance here to cross. Got Wong Chen in the box. Knocked away by Rampong. Wong Ling Ling trying to get there. Lloyd just in time. Clear away by Lapel Bet. Put back in. This is Wu Haiyan. That's the cross in. Good header away by Salabret. 
Who's in front of Jin Guaijin? Now around it carrying the other way. Quarter hour to go. For U.S. side that has kept clean sheets in each of the last three matches on this tour, twice against the Republic of Ireland and Saturday against China. Rodriguez's his first touch now for Box. And that went too far for Megan Rapino. You see the national title winner for USC. I don't think they've ever been in the Final Four. That was when she was in charge of that team as their star in 2007. Summer she was assisting on Carly Lloyd's gold medal winner in Beijing. The combination of the center is cool eyes trying to get away and Fox commits the foul. Can Pue, who as an 18-year-old started that 1999 World Cup final against the U.S. Christy Rampone was on the bench that day for the U.S. The only two players from either of those sides still active. You see Rampone there. Fox pressure. That's a hard challenge there. Rapino trying to come away with the ball. It was caught from behind. We go quickly forward here as Lillard plays wide for O'Reilly. It's had a very solid match tonight. Using her speed to get around the defender, the cross headed away by Huang Yi Ni. Looks like to go wide for the Pelbet. And Wang Ling Ling read that well. Pelbet will get it after all, though. Back for LaRue. Rapino. LaRue scored the second goal Saturday. Tackle off the ball, though. Missing hard, forces the giveaway. Salabra can shoot if she wants. And instead lays it back for Box. O'Reilly passed one, but not the other. You can see the smile on Heather O'Reilly's face. She's just enjoying herself to death out there. And what a great game that she's had being involved in just so many great opportunities for the United States. Here comes our substitution, the 20-year-old midfielder, Zhang Xin, coming on for Wang Lingling. So the substitute substituted in the course of the second half. Rodriguez sends it in the box, not far enough for LaRue. down in the center. Celebra now. World forward for Rodriguez. Now we'll run a little bit across from deep. And as it go all the way through to the roof. Perhaps a second chance though. Here Rodriguez. Heading off for Lloyd. Good control. Lloyd in traffic. Still Carly Lloyd. Able to get the shot away. Comes off the side of the head. Wong Dong Ni. Rapino, with a heavy touch there. And we'll get it away. And keep it in American possession. Sour run now. Good switch from Box. Morale couldn't quite control it and bodied off the ball. Huang Yini, the 19-year-old, has been battling all night. That Chinese back line. Marks now in for the room. He now turns to face. Plays wide for Rodriguez. Final 10 minutes. What are you hoping to see from the U.S. to finish this one out? 
Well, you know, I was just uh, I was just looking at what's happening in the midfield. There's a lot of great mobility. Um, Shannon Box is, is sitting a little bit deeper, which is allowing Carly Lloyd to push higher. I like what Becky Sauerbrunn is doing. She's been pushed in a wide position on the right side. Uh, as I said at the onset of the match, I think Becky Sauerbrunn is really the future of defenders for the United States. She has the technical ability uh, to play anywhere in the back line. She also can play defensive center mid. So I'd like to see her get involved a little bit more in, in that wide position. Uh, but 3 nothing is, is a, quite a generous lead at this point. But continuing to press forward and having composure in that final third, taking advantage of China, who's basically collapsed into their own end, is, is really important. Sauber now on it. Finds O'Reilly. Lepanda was trying to play that for Rapino. And these teams will play for a third time in eight days. Saturday in Boca Raton, Florida, first to give away. It's O'Reilly out looking to shoot from distance. Takes a touch off the defender there, Huang Yini. And that will be the final match of a very long, but very successful 2012 for the U.S. women before her Tom Sermani said in our pregame. They get a little bit of time off. They get back to work. It'll be a year of change. And Again, with the new Women's Professional League, it'll be a different looking landscape in 2013. Long ball for Lloyd for LaRue to chase, but Wong Fate with a number of fine saves in the first half. Out again, did you see Sermani there? Yeah, there's just so much change that can happen right now for this U.S. team. As Tom Sermani looks on, he's organizing his thoughts of what he's going to start to do in late January when he gets his squad back together. The potential of a new pro league is going to open up um, the, the foundation underneath this national team and give some of the younger players who have, have been caught in between college soccer and being on this full national team opportunities to play. Goalkeepers are going to get more minutes. Younger players are going to start to get involved. There's just so many great things. Uh, the current women's national team is under contract negotiations right now. Their contract expires at the, at the end of this season. So there's so much change happening right now. Uh, with this program, it, it's going to really make for an exciting first year for Tom Sermani. Give us a couple of those names. You're talking about, and again, there's been so many good college players. Who's a name or two that fans should be kind of looking out for in 2013? Well, you know, the, there are so many youthful players out there in the goalkeeping realm. Ashlyn Harris is a great example. Uh, Crystal Dunn, who just won a national championship at the University of North Carolina, can play in any line, part of the U-20 championships teams. Um, you've got uh, Summer Green, who also was part of that U-20 championship team. Julie Johnston, who just won the Young Female Player of the Year Award. Um, there are just so many young players that are part of this program in the future. But then you've got a lot of players that are in that mix, just graduating from college, that need that opportunity, need a place to play, and need to get some game time. And that will be the challenge of the balance for Sermani. who takes charge of his second national team in charge of 11 years and two spells of Australia. This box finds on the outside, dispossessed by Chen Guaixin. John, I'll throw you a couple of other names. There's a goalkeeper out there I've been really impressed with. He's part of the under-17 uh, national team program, Jane Campbell out of Atlanta. Uh, a heck of a, of a young goalkeeper, but I think those players need to get in the mix and gain some experience. Great skill by O'Reilly on the outside. Trying to get to the byline, O'Reilly keeps that in play of the cross, is that off the goalkeeper, off the post, a follow up, Amy Rodriguez. Four nil to the United States. Well, the fans are certainly getting their fill tonight. And a, a nice attack from the U.S. starting from a wide position. Heather O'Reilly once again grabbing the ball from a wide spot and just attacking the end line with fury. Ball bounces off and deflects off of Juan Fay, drops into the lap of Amy Rodriguez, and she does a nice job to put this away. But look at the effort and work by Heather O'Reilly to get to an end line position and draw this ball backwards. Just tremendous. 
Third of the four goals that she has been involved in in some way, O'Reilly, and for Amy Rodriguez, goal number nine of the year. 26 of her career on her 101st appearance. And that would actually, you take Sidney LaRue out, that would actually have just about tied the record for goals off the bench for a U.S. women's player in a calendar year. And we can see the joy in the faces of the starters down below. This is exactly what they wanted from this tour. Celebrate with the fans, score goals, entertain. Couldn't quite do that as much against Germany in those two great matches back in October. But turning on the style of it here tonight against China. Rapino trying to do the same. That did stay in play. Still Megan Rapino. Not quite the right pass for the Pelbeck. Carly though and commits the foul. She got the worst of that challenge. And no rush here to get things going. And they were hopeful of having a better result than the 2 0 loss on Saturday. More acclimated to their opponent and to the time change and the travel. And quite the opposite, unfortunately, for them. Rampone, who, if she plays Saturday, will be alone in second place all time for appearances on this U.S. team, only appearances for any national team. Currently tied with Mia Hamm as of tonight. Lapel bet able to keep that in play. Moving now looking long. It's for Rodriguez to chase. And a U.S. throw. Helbert, early ball, able to thread it through for LaRue, gets it from Rapino in the end. Rapino now, offs in the cross, under way by Huang Yini. Rapino for Rodriguez. Good touch to find Lloyd. And the Steely resolve at about the 20, 25 yard mark of the field. From the Chinese back line, O'Reilly gets it away. This is Becky Sauerbrunn now. Sauerbrunn's cross, straight up in the air. Handling forward is Lloyd. They will just cycle it back out. What a U.S. draw. No score of the U.S. second goal tonight. Morales crossed, and she had yet another goal on the end of a setup. Rapino. Oh, a chance, perhaps, for China to come forward. Jen Guajin immediately dispossessed by Amy LaPelva. Sauerbrunn commits the foul there. Quickly intercepts the early free kick. Tim Grajin gets the pass away. This is Wang Chen now. Now Shaoshu plays it wide. Cross in, almost found. Ma Sha Shu on the doorstep and just muscle off it. Christy Rampone, great defending, and then Barnhart leaps on the loose ball. 
quickly forward for Rapino. Rodriguez making the run. O'Reilly on the right as well. It comes for LaRue. O'Reilly still calling for it. Three minutes extra will play at the discretion of the referee. Rapino plays the one two with the chip base defender. Rodriguez, good turn. Nowhere to go though. Nine white shirts back in behind the ball though, and eventually it peters out. China with a good opportunity here from a nice wide position. You can see a white jersey stretching and moving and pulling the U.S. defense out of its shape. That's Ma Xiao Shen who ultimately gets into that space, was looking as if she was looking for a, a penalty kick, but uh, incidental contact there by Amy LaPelvin. A good job by LaPelvin just to be in a space to not allow Ma Xiaoxing to get off the shot. It would take quite the sympathetic referee to give a penalty kick at this point in the match, one way or the other. Given the scoreline, and the final two minutes or so on the watch of referee Christian Shirek. Finds LaRue, the layoff for Rapino, not going to get there. Well, John, to China's credit, I think that Hao Wei, the head coach for China, has a lot to work with with this young squad. I think you're just going to see this squad getting better and better and coming into the United States and, and playing this three-game series is only going to help his players to play faster, play more physical, gain some confidence, and uh, really try and establish themselves back at the top um, echelon of, of international women's soccer. I've been impressed by, you know, their ability to connect and hold the ball. I think it's been a bit of a defensive shape for them, but this experience of being on the field with the U.S. will really help. Really interesting to see in three years' time who the powers are. It changed so much from 2007 to 2011. A country like France emerging and being an absolute power. You've got an aging Germany team. You've got an aging U.S. team. You've got an aging Canada team. You know, I think the, the transition here as to how people organize their youth is going to become really critical for international soccer in the next five years. Oh, 30 seconds or so of this one. Two from Abby Wallback. Amy Rodriguez and Carly Lloyd adding the others. And Heather O'Reilly has been absolutely superb this evening involved in the buildup of three of those goals. Rachel Bueller now. Perhaps one last attack. Here's Lapelbet. There's options in the box. Lapelbet's cross. Can't find a blue shirt. The U.S. at this point is happy to hear the final whistle go. Which indeed it does now. So 4 0 for the U.S. Smiles on the faces of the fans. 365 minutes without conceding. Going back in October. Lori Walker exactly. What Jill Ellis, Tom Sermani, everyone else wearing a U.S. crest would have wanted for this one. Well, I, I really feel that the United States uh, is, is giving the fans what this tour is all about. Some excitement, some flair, getting to see a lot of variety. Abby Wambach scoring her 24th and 25th goals of the season. She's been so important to this team's success. As I mentioned earlier, scoring five goals at the Olympics. Um, you know, there's a great competition right now between her and Alex Morgan and, and who's going to score the most goals with both players contributing so much to this squad in the attacking end. Regardless of what happens on Saturday, it's a great boost to carry into Sermani's regime in 2013. Absolutely, and, and, and this has been a long sequence for these players. This is the ninth out of ten games. The players are ready for a break, but for Tom Sermani, the new head coach, to be able to come in, observe, get to know these personality players a little bit, and then be able to organize his thoughts at the beginning of January while the players are resting. That's going to be a, a wonderful opportunity for him to take over. His first event will be the Algarve Cup, and um, he will have a camp leading up to that. And so it'll be fun to see. Are there some new faces that come in? And as he mentioned, he's not going to change things a whole lot right off the bat. He's going to observe and give the players the opportunity to earn his respect. More coming here from Houston. Rob Stone and Kim Tradisianop. And we'll have Heather O'Reilly for her reaction to the desk. Full time in Houston. It finishes United States 4, China 0.
Four goals in this one. Let's take a look at all of them. Only one came in the first half, and it came right here. Heather O'Reilly with the service in the 20th minute. Abby Wambach, career goal number 149. Slew of subs in the second half, corner kick. Carly Lloyd, second straight game with the goal, 2-0 States. And what I loved about both those balls in is they were aiming, they were specifically picking out someone when they're playing those balls in. They're not just throwing them in there willy-nilly. The ball by Hull O'Reilly, and then of course, the goal by Carly Lloyd. They were placed perfectly on their head. O'Reilly laying that one down. Abby Wambach cuts the defender, buries this one in. Her 150th career goal, 25th of the season. That made it 3-0 for the United States. They weren't done there. O'Reilly, again, finds Rodriguez here in the 85th minute. And the rebound goal would make it 4-0 United States. And let's be honest, the U.S. was just too much for China to handle today. I mean, the offense just never quit. And they were just lost out there. The Chinese defense just didn't have an answer for the U.S. today. Fourth straight win by shutout for the United States women's national team. Their 27th victory of the campaign. Abby Wambach with two goals. But joining us on the set right now, Heather O'Reilly with two goals, had a massive hand in all three. What was the difference between today's performance and Saturday versus China? Did you just give me two goals on the night? I gave you two assists <laughs> and maybe a third. I would have given you a third. I'm generous. Uh, you know, it was a great all-around team performance. Uh, defensively very tidy. It allows for the rest of us to do what we do and attack. Um, as a flank player, I know having players like Abby Wambach in the box Alex Morgan with her speed and ability to slash defenders. You know, you put some good services in the box and, and good things will happen. That happened in the first goal. Amy Rodriguez coming off the bench and, uh, and finishing a really nice shot. So we're happy with uh, the goals we created and what a, what a crowd, what an atmosphere tonight. Well, and how do you guys continue to find the energy? I mean, I know we talked about this at training yesterday, but game nine of this 10 game fan tour that you're on, but how do you guys find the energy every night? I think it comes down to two things, and the first and foremost is our fans. You know, these, these guys came out tonight looking for a great game, and we have a responsibility to play uh, exciting soccer. The second thing is just we are competitive women, and, uh, you know, every time that we step on the field, every time we wear red, white, and blue, we want to perform. We have our new coach watching there in the stands, Tom Sermani. I think that adds another dimension to things. Um, but you know what? When it comes down to it, we want to compete. We want to perform well. And this is fun for us. This is, a, this is what we, do. we love. This is our passion. Abby now eight goals shy of tying Mia Hamm for the all-time U.S. scoring record. Your time with Abby on the field, what has she meant to this team, to this program? I mean, Abby's unbelievable. I mean, her, her courage, her leadership, her passion, her heading ability, um, all things that, that, that really do separate her from anybody else in the world. I'm sure uh, happy and lucky to have her on my team. What is the challenge of playing a team three times in a row? Obviously, it was pretty chippy today. We heard it was chippy in the game Saturday, and of course, you see China again on Saturday as well. How do you guys deal with that kind of physicality and also playing the same team three times in a row? I mean, I think it's about focusing on us and just moving the ball quickly. I mean, they were tackling uh, pretty hard tonight. Uh, but it just makes us play with speed, um, you know, a one-two touch soccer. I think that we were able to break them down really nicely at times. And, and you know what, they're a good team. They're very compact in the back, but it takes a certain patience and discipline to, to keep the ball moving. Heather, I wish you were a little more comfortable with the microphone. <laughs> I, see a, I see a future for you in broadcasting. Look at she's looking Hopefully at Hopefully right. many more years on the field. Yeah, yes, girl, yes. There's a good Jersey girl in the Tar Heel there for you. A little shout out to Leco Escondarian while we're at it. Jersey. Right, Heather? Heather, we appreciate it. Congratulations. Good luck Saturday down in Florida when you guys continue your season. The final game of the campaign is that once again you guys take on China. The final here from Houston, 4-0. One goal in the first half. Three in the second half, the U.S. women earned their 27th victory of 2012. They've now scored 116 goals this calendar year. They've got 90 more minutes to tack on to that total. Glad you enjoyed this one from Houston. Fox Soccer News coming up next.